Good afternoon, everybody. It's Saturday, April 27th, 2019, and today I was inspired to make a video about how to make fermented vegetables. I was having lunch with a friend after pickleball, and she told me that she's been on an antibiotic for the last six days, and it hasn't done her any good. She's still coughing and having congestion, and she's not sleeping at night, and so we started delving a little deeper and found out that she became ill on a trip she made with her children over spring break. Now, I've been learning about health and uh, natural healing and stuff like that, and so before I say anything, I just wanna make a little disclaimer. I am not a medical professional. Any advice I give you on this video, um, it, you have to use at your own risk. So. Yes, there is a time and a place for antibiotics, but it is my belief that they are overused in this country, and if you will go to YouTube and look up a doctor out of Charlottesville. His name is Zach Bush and he has a lot of great information on YouTube about antibiotics, about Roundup and how it plays into cancer. One of the things that he talks about, and I hear about this from other uh, natural practitioners as well, is that stress is the number one cause for a depressed immune system. And in fact, germs don't make you sick it's a depressed immune system that makes you susceptible to the germs that normally we can fight off ourselves. So fermented foods are a really good way to build your immune system from the inside to help you fight whatever germs you come into contact with. And I think there are so many ways out there to do that, but fermented foods is one of my favorite ways. Fermented foods are delicious. They're super healthy. They put in lots of probiotics into your body to help you digest food, to help you to fight disease, fight aging, and also fight infection. But I'm so, gonna give you sort of my three year into my journey, go to fermented cabbage recipe right now. And I'm just gonna show you how to make it. I'll walk you through the process. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the comments below. So here are the things you're gonna need. Start with a half a cup of filtered water. You're gonna want some unrefined sea salt. It needs to be unrefined because you don't want any, any added iodine. This will naturally have iodine in it, but you don't want any added chemicals in your fermented foods. You'll need a carrot, a head of cabbage. I prefer the purple. It just tastes really good, better than the green. It's got more of the nutrients in the leaves and everything as well. So. That's a good go-to. And then I use about this much onion for a cabbage this size. And the reason you need the carrot is because you've gotta have the sugar for the bacteria to grow. They need something to eat. And they'll basically eat all of the sugar out of this carrot, so you don't have to worry about that for yourself. Now let's just talk about some of the other tools I've got. My wide mouth mason jar. It's either a pint or a half gallon, I don't even know. Anyway, it's this size, <laughs> so whatever. These are tools that I got off of Donna's site, Cultured Food Life. The top is a special top for fermentation. And this little thing here fits in the hole like this. And I'll show you this when I put it together at the end. And it just sits on top. And what happens is there's a little, there are little air holes in here and you fill it about here with filtered water. And if your jar begins to overflow, and because the bacteria does grow and it produces air and it produces more liquid and all that kind of stuff, and you don't want your jar to explode on the counter. So this is a handy tool if you're not gonna remember to open your jar and burp it every day, which you have to do if you don't have this, because you will have an exploded glass jar and all kinds of salty liquid brine all over your kitchen if you don't. So I recommend investing in this. You know, you buy it once and it comes two in a pack and two of the tops and then you can use them and use them and use them forever. So it's really nice because what happens is the liquid comes up here. You can see the color if you can catch it in time. And if you can't, it will come out of the top and so your jar will not explode. So I recommend that. The other thing I recommend if you can't get that is they sell these little plastic tops at Walmart. And I like these much better than the metal because the metal eventually will begin to rust. 
And the last thing you want to be eating in your fermented foods is rusty rust. So that's nasty. So when I'm done fermenting, I put this top on it to put it in the fridge. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is core my cabbage. So I'm just going to cut it in half. And I just want that thick core out of the center because it doesn't shred or grate very well. Okay, so before I begin to shred, I want to make sure I take one of these half cut pieces of whole cabbage leaf off the top. And I want to try to keep it intact as much as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. But that's going to go in the top of my jar when I'm done stuffing my cabbage in there and I'm going to wrap it kind of in and hold down and I'll show you my little trick for doing that in a minute and then I'm just going to get them small enough to go into the food processor and I'm going to shred everything and when I'm done shredding it I'm going to put it in this bowl right here mix it up. Okay, so I have my little shredder in the top already set up, my grater. And I like this one because it's really wide at the top so I can get a lot in it. It also has the smaller piece if you're just doing like carrots or something smaller that you want to put in there and push through. But I like having the wide. Once your vegetables are all shredded together, you dump them into a bowl, and then you want to take one tablespoon of salt. You can purchase um, something called cultured just cultures, that's what they're called, um, on the Cultured Food Life website. I did use them for a while. They're supposed to produce more cultures than just salt, but I feel like if you're using organic vegetables and good quality sea salt and filtered water, you're going to get all of the nutrients you need out of these vegetables. So after you sprinkle with salt, mix that up and you want to kind of give it a squeeze, not too much, but just kind of squeeze your vegetables a little bit. And what that begins to do is release the natural enzymes of the vegetables so that they start to interact with the salt. We're going to leave it in this bowl for 30 minutes and they are going to begin to sweat, release their fluid, the liquid out of the vegetables. Dill is what I like to use in my fermented vegetables. It gives it that dill pickle flavor that I really like. Now you can use just about anything. There are recipes with apples that come out kind of a little bit sweet. There are recipes with bay leaves. There are recipes with garlic and I've done that before too and that's really yummy. I just wanted to show off the lovely view we have outside of the window where I've been working. This is the Occoquan River. The big tree out there is a cherry tree and unfortunately all of the little pink blossoms have, most of them, have blown onto the ground and so you are not going to get to see it in full bloom. But we enjoy all kinds of wildlife out here. There's been a bald eagle. We've seen an oriole. Of course, herons and hawks and the regular songbirds like cardinals and titmice and chickadees. So we really love our beautiful home with nature right out back. My 30 minutes is up and my vegetables are ready to go in the jar. The first thing I like to do is take some of my dill, just break off a few sprigs, and then I like to arrange it in the jar, kind of on the outside of my vegetables. So I'll start with a couple of in there on the side, and then I'm just going to begin to put my vegetables in the jar. You're going to want to pack these vegetables in tight. I'm going to get it about halfway, and then I'm going to start adding my water. 
So the first thing I want to do is take another half tablespoon this time, and I'm going to put that in my half a cup of water. I'll stir it around a little bit. I'm not going to need any more salt. I may need some more water, but I won't need any more salt. My formula is one and a half tablespoons of salt for this size jar right here. Pour that in. You want all the salt to get in there as well. So I'm going to continue to add my vegetables. The last couple of sprigs of dill. If I take my fingers kind of in a fist and I push the vegetables down, really drive them down hard so that the liquid comes to the top. So now the liquid is covering the vegetables and that's really important. If you don't cover your vegetables with the liquid, what will happen is a little white bacteria will grow. Now, It will not hurt you. The white bacteria is perfectly safe. However, it doesn't taste good and you won't want to eat your vegetables. So this has a little extra space. I'm going to add just a slight amount of filtered water to this and then I'll show you how to finish off your jar. So I've added about a quarter cup of water to submerge my vegetables. First, I put my cabbage leaf that I reserved on top and I push down to try to get the veggies under the liquid, but not let any of them, if I can help it, escape. Now, some people take a rock the size of the jar, boil it, and then they can put it in the top. But I am going to use a method that my daughter showed me. This is a little teacup, and we just set it in the top. And I already put my water to the fill line in here. I'm gonna set this into my top, and I just kind of twist it down a little bit so that it's firm and secure, sealed. And then I'm just going to place the top on and screw it on tight. Now, make sure that it's tight. That's another thing. If your jar is open to the air, it will ruin your vegetables. That will grow the wrong kind of bacteria and you don't want to do that. So you want this to be airtight, tight on the jar. After this, you just let it do its thing. You need to put it on a countertop, put it in a place away from the sunlight, and every day open your jar long enough to let it burp, let some of the air out so that it doesn't explode, screw the top back on, leave it in its place, and after seven days, put it in the fridge, put the other top on it, and put it away, and then you're ready to eat it. It will continue to ferment in the fridge as well, it produces a lot of liquid during the fermentation, but once I put it into the refrigerator, it starts to, for some reason, dry up. There's a very simple fix for it. Whenever I pull the jar out, if it looks dry, I just run some more filtered water in it and just kind of gently push down so that the water gets incorporated into the entire mixture. You can leave these in the refrigerator for six months. They will keep. Um, we like to put them on eggs in the morning. We like to put them on sandwiches. We like to put them on the top of salads. Sometimes I just come in in the morning and take a big spoon and down it, and I know that I'm giving my body the nutrients that it needs. You can learn more about cultured foods by visiting culturedfoodlife.com. To learn more about alternative health and wellness, visit my blog at www. Dot ripplesofinsight.net. Thanks for watching.